today we have an approach to ophthalmology session and uh, uh, we didn't find any better mentor than our own dr chinmay madam for this session to guide the students and members of white army and uh, dr chinmay madam as we all know uh, she has been the uh, mentor since the beginning of white army to be frank uh, and she's my personally she's my one of my favorite teachers uh, at bangalore medical college and uh, she's one uh, i do not be wrong if i say she is the inspiration behind me starting uh, this white army yes she was the one who motivated me in the, when i was in third year mbbs all her lecture, lectures or maybe clinical uh, classes all all her ppts were based on all clinical photographs of the patients and all her own videos of the patients she used to demonstrate all through or teaches everything through her own clinical photographs and videos her passion for teaching is uh, uh, incredible so that's what motivated me to do the same emulate the same even i started taking the photographs of the patients whenever i see some interesting cases and started posting in the whatsapp groups and i started with one whatsapp group and now it has reached to this level so it would not be uh, wrong if i give the total credit of uh, the uh, success of white army to chinmay madam so she's such a inspiring uh, teacher and the one who uh, made me what i am today uh, thank you madam once again uh, you have been the uh, continuous uh, continuously uh, backing us up every time and uh, you have been the best mentor for us in white army uh, and today you are there with us to guide our students uh, how to approach or how to study uh, ophthalmology as a subject and how to do well in uh, uh, upcoming university examination uh, thank you once again for joining us also we have uh, dr jesleen who is a third year post graduate at bangalore medical college with us uh, to give her valuable inputs welcome to you dr jesleen Uh, thank you, Kishan, uh, for that very wonderful introduction. Uh, I'm, I'm like very touch my heart the way you describe. I mean, I yeah, it's very fortunate to have such good students also. I mean, from that day only, I was very clear that you will reach great heights. And this is something unimaginable what you have done, reaching out to a lot of students all over the world, and particularly during the COVID time. Uh, I mean, I myself. wouldn't have been able to reach this many students but for you so thank you for creating this like uh, even uh, in some other random places i meet students and they tell me over your lecture so it's a, it's a really wonderful initiative uh, that you have done and yes madam or else a good teacher like you would have been confined to only a bangalore medical college <laughs> or only uh, those students would have been got benefited uh, by you now it's that irrespective of the college uh, where the place where you in or what kind of uh, studies you are doing they get to uh, listen to you they get to learn from the best of the best mm -hmm. teachers so even the students are getting benefited a lot madam mm -hmm. uh, everyone's uh, dream it is to study in bangalore medical college but uh, only 150 or 250 seats are there <laughs> okay mm -hmm. so limited seats are there so everyone will not have that privilege to get to directly learn from you but this is one uh, a way uh, they can even uh, uh, even being uh, in other colleges uh, they can get to learn from the best teachers so we always say they are students are divided by colleges but united by white yeah, army that's, uh, that's by, a very nice uh, tag line and vision statement for that knowledge is definitely uh, best when it is shared and yes, uh, it is definitely congratulations to you on doing this wonderful work kishan Ah, uh, Kishan, like I always remember Kishan's uh, PowerPoint that he did as a third year student. Like it was mutual; the inspiration is mutual. And uh, even I was very shocked to see a student presenting so well. And it is very apt that you went on to start this. Okay. Ah, uh, so yeah, madam. Ah, uh, to start with, yes. this is the this year is the first batch of CBME uh, students we are having. Okay, mm -hmm. so they're all kind of. Uh, i don't say perplexed but still they are uh, still not uh, clear how the exam going uh, going to be uh, what kind of questions they'll be asking how the questions will be framed uh, what will be the pattern so many unnecessary questions and uh, um, uh, doubts they are having so we thought uh, uh, it would be apt to uh, clarify all those uh, doubts be even uh, much before the examinations so madam uh, what should be their approach uh, Or to the university exam, upcoming university examination while mm -hmm. studying or uh, like preparation for the examination, everything. 
So on your right of note to all the students, uh, it is our uh, first exam CBA, <laughs> right? So it it's the same like how you are first perplex, even we are perplex as to how the students will react. And definitely post COVID, uh, most of you haven't been uh, able to attend the clinical postings, like uh, full clinical postings, I guess. So um, I guess it will be a little bit, uh, do not be very afraid of the exams. You have been facing all the exams throughout your life. And if you have got a medical seat, it is definitely you are the best in your school. So that way, uh, in your mind, you should always be confident that uh, you are going to do very well. And uh, considering the exams uh, coming in, uh, maybe I guess it's uh, Jan, mid-Jan or something. Yes. Early. So uh, what I generally used to do uh, during my uh, MVPS days, I mean, I can just uh, share you. Uh, many of you would have been uh, well prepared. Some of you may have prepared half and half, and there would be some students who have not prepared that well and would be uh, like uh, yet to start. Yet to start. Certain yeah. papers. So it is always, we cannot give you one type of um, criteria. So mm -hmm. you can divide it into three types or two types of people, like uh, one, at least one full reading has been given. Uh, that is one, one type. Partial, at least 50% you have read once. And another thing is that you, have, you couldn't have read in detail about all the things. So the, uh, the thing is like, uh, definitely there is no shortcut to do better, right? Uh, we all know that the more well-prepared you are, you will always do better. It is like uh, bleed more during practice than at war. Yeah. So yeah. More you sweat to... during practice, less you bleed during, during the war. <laughs> during the, uh, war. So it is like, uh, unfortunately, it, this may not have happened. It will be, uh, you know, every year we think, okay, next exam I should be thoroughly prepared. I should start from the beginning like that. So let's assume that uh, from today you're going to start. So that gives us about uh, 25 days at least. So it is 20th today, and let's say your exams are on Jan 15th. So it will be about 25 days. So in these 25 days, how will I uh, go about? So uh, uh, the one important thing that I find in present day students and uh, uh, with us, like how we used to do, the most important thing is we did not have distractions. Uh, yeah. That is your mobile phone and the social media. Okay, so it is very, very hard for you to go into a kind of low state. So those of you who have read well uh, can afford to spend time on other activities. But those of you who haven't uh, read very well can definitely catch up with the people uh, who have read well by entering into your flow state. Okay, so it is like, let's say I take uh, three hours to read a particular chapter, let's say I uh, lens I have to study. Uh, at your speed, you need three hours in mm -hmm. a regular state. You can, uh, now that there is a time crunch, you all know, like uh, when, you, when you do not have an option, the uh, status of the mind becomes very sharp, it becomes very attentive, okay. and you perform much better. So mm -hmm. at least in this period, you can keep a very tight, uh, like schedule. A schedule or I would say not a very long one but then um, in uh, tight bubbles like Elon Musk tells that yeah, like you know, yeah. tight bubbles like you, you don't have to read for a long time but whatever you're going to read in that small one hour or keep it 30 minutes okay because beyond 30 minutes the mind really cannot focus so if you're going to keep 30 minutes uh, prior to that and after, you should not, your mind should not waver anywhere. Uh, waver here. You can uh, finish off a three hour chapter very well within one and a half hour at the max two hours. Okay. So, definitely maintaining a non disruptive uh, type of atmosphere, uh, keeping your phone in silent mode or switching off the internet. See, you are not really going to get any a life and death kind of situation, right? That you have to keep on checking your phone all the time. So, but then every single message comes uh, because we are doctors, we know it is like acting like dopamine. 
like every single message is going to alter your brain and to come back to that uh, focus study it will it is going to take you another 20 years so do not get distracted during these 20 uh, days so people who are afraid of facing the exams who are thinking i'm not less prepared uh, definitely there is time i'll tell you one instance uh, when i was in, in mbbs and back then we were giving four we were also giving forensic exam uh, along with uh, pathomicro. And I had the sports meet uh, zonal shuttle badminton. So first of all, for that, we were practicing a lot. So every day morning, evening, two hours for that uh, prior to the exams. And giving off four days, just 20 days before the exam was like uh, really oh. crazy. When I came back, I was like really afraid. Like all my friends have moved on. They have finished a lot more time. So at that time, even I was very perplexed, like how, how, how am I going to finish all these things? Like I did had read earlier, but then this last minute reading, what we all, uh, as medicals, we are aware that unless you read during the end of your uh, thing, you won't remember because it's very volatile. Yes. And let me tell you, yes. often it's really volatile. So uh, yes, the very important thing that uh, you best, have- to Best example is cataract classification, ma'am. Right. <laughs> so, you, the, you will, when you finish that you'll be like I can never forget in my life and right after a week it's like oh did I even read this so it will be like that so the only thing that you can do now if you have not prepared well, is to have 100% focus see 100% only okay even 98% is not same as 100% right so it should be 100% this time and 20 days definitely is more than enough. Yes, you, you would have and yeah, now sure. that uh, they have got the study holidays, ma'am, the entire day they can ah, spend all your studies. Day. And yeah. that uh, uh, off the textbook, uh, I don't think it won't require more than a week or so to completely right. finish off the book. It's not that yeah. vast also for undergraduate level. Okay, yes, yeah. it's volatile, but uh, one complete study and two more revisions, quick two revisions. Uh, yeah. Definitely. And yeah, I also used to give the same example, madam, like you said, uh, yeah. when I was in BMC, I used to attend a lot of uh, uh, sports meets here and there. Yeah, and what yeah. happens, ma'am, like, uh, like from student's perspective, I'm telling whatever you mentioned. Uh, when I'm playing there, I will play a uh, film concentration. When I come back, yeah. I feel that, oh my God, last five yeah. days, I totally wasted. All my yeah. friends are studying and I was playing there. Now yeah. I have to cope up with them. So like you mentioned, uh, some essential pressure should be there. Or yes. brain just wavers like that when your mind is very yes. free. But yes. like that kind of some pressure or what is essential pressure is there, then it will uh, mo your brain will become more alert. And uh, I'll because I'll totally second you, madam, whatever you told my own experience. Right. Whatever they started in one week, I'll start finish it in one day. Yes. So it so, is it is only about that uh, flow state that is there. So if whenever you are in that flow state, that is your mind mm -hmm. is fully focused, no distraction you can definitely achieve a lot more uh, than that. So if I come back to these 20 days, like uh, how to go about, let's say hey, this is your uh, uh, Jan 20th is your exam, and today is 20th. So we, we still have two weeks. Like let's say we'll take two weeks because uh, it may come on 15th also, okay? So if it is like this, these, you, you have to make a timetable keeping all the days. Okay, I, I mean, uh, you all are very well, well, I don't have to tell this, but then uh, it's still better to uh, put up the timetable and keep well, your first revision, uh, keep your second revision, and then keep a final revision of two, uh, maybe just one day. One day before the uh, previous exam. night. Yes. So it is like you plan from uh, the D day, from your exam upwards. Okay. And then now what you have to do, just right after the session, what you have to do is to uh, open your textbook and then uh, see which are all the chapters that I have not even touched. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So that goes first because mm -hmm. in your mind, it will always be playing. I have not even read this. I have not even read this. At this stage, you cannot read a very deep uh, study because the time is short, just superficially. Uh, the chapters which you have not even touched once go first. Okay. And the ones which have already been read, see, somewhere deep in your brain, they will be there. So it won't take longer to uh, read those chapters. So make a list uh, or take your textbook, 
uh, in a book, just write down uh, chapter one, two, three, four, like that, and uh, sort out, segregate things which you are uh, good with, and segregate those which are not done with, and just jump into those. Don't delay because uh, the mind always wants to. Okay, let me read it later. Let me read it later. But then the fear of that chapter is not being read even once will kind of overpower you uh, with other things. So just go ahead. If they're not very important chapters, you you can you can kind of skip them. But if it is like retina that you have not read, if it is like yeah, corner yeah. that you have not read, you have to start with the things which have not been done, and that you should try and finish it off in this first week, starting cool. tomorrow. Okay, and by the end of this week, after this, no more fresh reading. Reading. Do not start anything new. Do not go uh, shift books or anything. So within that time frame, uh, just uh, finish. Up. And uh, now is an important uh, time to also make uh, write on drawings, like uh, very very simple thing. Like instead of remembering it as a whole paragraph. You can uh, remember it as a picture. Like, let's say, if the question is, uh, what are the clinical characteristics of an acute angle closure glaucoma? So instead of uh, remembering that page with each sentence, you can just make a small drawing uh, at the uh, just above your textbook. You can just put it as lid edema and uh, circumciliary congestion, vertically dilated pupil, like a hazy cornea, and raised IOP. Okay, oh, and right. then you can just put the patient's uh, thing and also put a vomiting and uh, headache. Okay, oh. so like this. So you uh, now it is like uh, if you start doing all this uh, for your second reading and just before the exam day, you don't have to actually read line by line. Just see the picture, and since a uh, pictorial memory is always better, yes, uh, it will hold on very well. Uh, so that. There's one thing, like definitely you should not be worried while you're preparing. And uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure for all the medical students do this, they will have small post-it notes. They would have highlighted, they would have made mnemonics. So right now we won't be able to do a deep reading. Definitely no line by line reading at this stage uh, after the second week. After your first revision, you will not have time because uh, then you will, you will have to assimilate other three subjects also. It's not just optical exam, right? So you uh, second revision and your final thing you can just uh, go out planning yeah just read headings uh, and definitely before the day of your exam just make sure to turn every single page every single okay page. okay okay so that gives you a mental confidence that you have gone through covered the everything yes yes, yes. Yeah. and uh, mm. according to you ma'am uh, what are the most important topics uh, for theory. Okay. Which we should not miss it, like you mentioned already. One yeah. retina, okay. Yeah. Similarly, uh, from yeah. the syllabus, uh, what are the most important topics, uh, the high weightage topics? Yes, so it is like uh, definitely if uh, we uh, look into our textbook, uh, like uh, let me just uh, open this book for you and uh, see. See, in for your practicals, one case will be of cataract, so yeah. cataract is definitely. The both most theory and uh, theory both and practical both it's very important. and practical. So both of them are uh, very very important. Uh, if you are going into uh, just can I focus on the book? Yes, yes. So if you if you are going on uh, this chapter, uh, the contents on classes. So embryology, anatomy, physiology, or vision, neurology, vision, all these things can skip for the time being. Like just the anatomy is very important. But then uh, here, ocular symptomology and all, you can keep it for your practicals. Assessment of visual function, examination, all this you can keep for your practical exam by your voice and all. Now coming to the diseases of the eye, definitely I would say congenitiva, cornea, the lens, glaucoma and retina are the most important chapter. Like from which questions uh, generally you are going to get your uh, long questions. That's like about 10 marks. Uh, definitely will be from any of these five chapters, the uh, lens, the glaucoma, cornea conjunctiva, or the retina. Okay, these five chapters, are, uh, you cannot skip anything in these five chapters. And also a lot of questions in your uh, viva verse will be uh, from the systemic ophthalmology or retina. Like, see, we want to ask you those questions, which as a doctor, 
a leader of an ophthalmologist as a physician let's say you're a physician so what is the knowledge that you want to carry with you even after finishing this ophthalmology exam so and not only for your exam i'm telling you uh, as a doctor we also need to know about retina because there is the india is the diabetic capital you should know about retina uh, lens your neighbor skin has what lens should i put what type of surgery should i put so these are very common things that all of us have to know and definitely system of ophthalmology so you know, these five chapters you there's no uh, nothing that you can do if you are not read you have to read it so we, I, i guess these are the five uh, important things for your uh, theory as well as your practical and uh, one you know, nice thing is that you are giving your community of tell in the same thing so you can uh, do one thing uh, the preventive ophthalmology the npcb the vision 2020 and all that you can um, mix your pldsm by your reading pldsm uh, npcb simultaneously finish your ophthalm so that way you save time okay so that one thing uh, if you are reading together that that will help in both the exams okay uh, and let's lacrimal apparatus orbit and the systemic uh, thing uh, that is also important orbit is important definitely so all i mean i think everything is important but uh, if you take marks per se these are the things which are uh, very very important uh, the other thing is like uh, these are the things where your long questions come that's 10 marks so otherwise uh, scoring marks like 3 3 marks and all will be mostly from your other chapters so that also you have to, you, you, have, you have to read everything um, definitely but stress more on these chapters um uh, you are a seasoned examiner okay for mm-hmm. uh, now almost a decade or so you have been an examiner mm-hmm. you know what is the mentality of the students uh, mm-hmm. uh, how they perform what are the common mistakes they do uh, exactly. everything okay both in theory as well as practical yes. so as a mentor what is your uh, uh, like uh, suggestion what are the common mistakes they do in uh, theory and uh, uh, practicals and uh, uh, what they should not be doing Okay, okay how can they avoid it and uh, what you expect as examiner how you want them to answer so it is like two things theory we are not seeing the person right the person is not that we are correcting a paper with no fix but practical exam there is a person the most important thing that i find as a uh, examiner i mean I, i was also a student one time is that uh, they are very stressed out uh, it is like some lion is sitting in front of them like that so uh, your uh, body language is something that i really want uh, people to change uh, in the practical exams okay i'll come back to the practical exam now in the theory exam uh, as an examiner when we are correcting uh, we will be doing a digital evaluation so you have papers that will be scanned and it will be coming on a screen right so if uh the handwriting definitely is very really, very important so if uh, they were written pure is small then we will be seeing it even more smaller on screen so it's very hard for us to um, you know see what is written in that so even if uh, uh, let's say 10 minutes it gets slowed down by writing a little more wider with spaces or bigger uh, ensure neatness of the paper margins of the paper because you know uh, the end even uh, the examiner is a human being and uh, anything which is neat uh, which is uh, having spaces you know for the eye if there is a lot of clutter on the paper it becomes very difficult to concentrate uh, on the important thing if everything is uh, uniform we won't know what is important so uh, definitely now since your papers are marked for each question which answer you don't have to worry about uh, leaving a page and all that but uh, when you are uh, writing a lot of students do not use uh, highlighting option or i mean highlights just uh, either in bold or uh, write, uh, writing in capital letters or underlining yes sir so that is something which you have to do and uh, starting from this corner till the end without any margins so that and uh, between two things not giving enough space yes. like you know the clinical features and continued on with the uh, uh, investigations 
and then treatment. So if it is written like this, no, uh, while correcting a lot of papers, it so happens that the person may think uh, what you have written here is part of the clinical features only. Uh, that is one thing. And definitely uh, doing uh, a good drawing is very, very important. So it saves time for the examiner, for the student also. And it conveys better message when you have put in a drawing. Like, uh, uh, we were, uh, let's say the question was um, classify diabetic retinopathy, uh, describe clinical features, management, and treatment. So you can, whenever the question is classified, why don't you use a flowchart? Flowchart. Writing, PDR, NPDR, PDR, this, like this. Use a flowchart, NPDR, PDR. Within PDR, within NPDR, CSC, clinical significant matter, like this. Okay, when so there are certain persons will be like whenever classify word is there, you try and use a flowchart. Okay, whenever the word differentiate is there, use a table. Okay, keep a table and write differentiate. Describe meaning it's a long, like a long essay. So description. Again, here, instead of doing like this, you put some space between the two things and put a box. Okay. Okay. So these are different ways of uh, representing. I, I'm sure, uh, Kishan, you can also add in like, you're a wonderful... No, no. Uh, you Perfect, perfect. Uh, uh, uh -huh. I do, I'm just listening to you. I'm also learning. Uh -huh. you know, I'm thinking I could have done better. <laughs> <laughs> So that is uh, something which I feel uh, makes it easier for the examiner to correct. Okay, uh, it, it is a lot more easier if there is some small spaces. Uh, there is some, uh, the monotone should not be there. Like two full pages should not be just words of same size and no blanks or nothing. So, and uh, like another question, let's say, for example, uh, describe the pupillary part. So, by far, what happens, like describe the pupillary pathway means they will just start the way with the light reflex. But then what you should forget that there's a near reflex also, right? The, so although the main thing is the light reflex, so the moment describe light reflex, you have to uh, not start off with the description. You can tell, uh, give one line about why the light reflex is important. It controls the entry of light. It is helpful for near accommodation. So just one line describing what it is. And then uh, again, in that also, you it is better you put in a picture. Okay. Mm. Put in a picture for that. If you if you do not know the picture, at least use that flow chart. Okay. And in the entire light reflex, what is that very important structure? Mm. Okay. So that decussation. Like. The pretectal nature is important. So those things could be highlighted. Highlighted. Yeah, the, and then uh, any anatomy question or uh, drawing is finished. Describe layers of uh, anatomy of cornea. You don't have to write anything. Just put in a neat diagram. Label diagram. Neat label. 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 Diagram. So if you it's to... self-explanatory, madam. Yes. It's self-explanatory. And also it impresses the examiner most that because only those yeah. who understood the concept and uh, okay. those who really and clear, them. only then they can write the diagrams. Right. And your diagram, again, don't label off like this. One here, one mm -hmm. here. Don't do that. So keep a neat margin like this. And put in here. Like all the things. So instead of making a fast uh, let it be a very uh, one side. Put everything in one side. It, it looks appealing to the examiner. It looks appealing to you. Okay, once you have written a neat diagram, you will know that, oh my God, I need, like, I've done a neat work. So that gives you more confidence to attempt your next questions better. Um, other thing is like uh, what you can do uh, many times uh, when the question is in two parts, uh, in a hurry to finish, the, you will write very nicely about the first part and forget about the next. So what can be done for those things is like uh, in the beginning only before attempting your question, yes. you can write in a pencil under what broad readings are going to answer this question. Yes. I think now marking from the question paper are not allowed. Ma'am, in the initial they allow five minutes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, five minutes will, question paper will be given five minutes before. So that time they can have an outline and yeah. planning all the ten outline. questions. Yes. And many now with the CBM coming in, the question is only divided into 
parts and it will be like uh, three months for this, three months for that. So ensure that you write all the parts. And there also you write question number one, A, B, C, D, A is classified, B is this, C is this, B is like that. Yeah, and handwriting is very, very important. Like, uh, be very legible. If people with smaller handwriting, at least give a wider space between the words. Yeah. So that is in with respect to the theory. And uh, yeah, it is like since it is numbered, you cannot uh, um, like jumble your answers. So unfortunately, some earlier people used to do that. Uh, whatever the new file uh, very well would be written in the first and uh, they did like that. Now that will not be the case. Uh, always attempt things to know first uh, very nicely. That gives you confidence that you, okay, I have attempted a few nice questions which you know and uh, later go in with the things that you don't know. And stick on to your time. Time is very, very crucial. It is uh, three hours, full hours. You wouldn't have written other than your last exam. Like one year, one whole uh, year of gap, three hours you wouldn't have stand. So divide your time properly. Like you have question paper pattern, you all you all have written two CDME exams already. So it is like two long questions, there are 10 marks each, and then you have uh, eight uh, five markers, and then you have uh, 10 three markers, and then you have 10 one markers. So if you see uh, your marks are all uh, here, right? So this is like 40 and uh, you have 30. So your 70 marks are sitting in this thing. So likewise, your uh, time also should be divided like that. If you take one whole hour uh, for writing two long questions at 30, 30 minutes each, you will still get some 15 only. You will not get 20, right? A maximum will get 18. So you, you won't be getting more. So see this thing here. So the 70 marks are in your five and three markers. And those are easier to write than uh, your long question. So give more stress on this. Keep 10 minutes extra, uh, leave 10 minutes extra and plan accordingly. MCQs, it depends like uh, how much uh, each question, how different is a question. So we cannot see. Generally, uh, on an average, uh, how much question you uh, like generally for PG exams and all, they take about a minute or so for per question, right? So they should be finishing in about 10 to 15 minutes or so, max the MCQ. So these are the scoring thing, like whatever. And the three mark question, no, you, I mean, it's like a uh, three mark question doesn't mean you write three lines, okay? So three signs of, uh, uh, three causes for acute red diamonds. So don't, just don't write uh, acute conjunctivitis, acute iridocyte letters, and something else. Uh, just one one additional line of that acute congestive uh, glaucoma. The redness is because of both superficial and deep condition. Uh, acute conjunctivitis, the conjunctivitis is superficial condition, like that. And sometimes I've had three complications of uh, cataract surgery. You just write three like three words like end of thermitis, flat anterior chamber, or something. So that is like very hard to give three marks for that, right? Uh, I mean, you are in an MBBS uh, exam. It's not like uh, some school exam. So at least, and see, you have one whole page to write the answer. And like in the top three lines are written and it's done. So just for time's sake, you can write it off, but come back to it and write a little about those things. Three contraindications for particular drug. Like let's say Timolol, three con contraindications if you ask. Then at least you, you had a right three things like why beta block, it's a beta blocker, it has receptors in the heart as well, the same receptors are here. So in COPD patients, why why it causes it causes bronchospasm in heart, why why in, why it is not in why it, it lowers your pulse rate like that a little a little more weeks. The three months I really want to stress. So just don't read three lines definitely. It's not a one mark question, right? It's three whole marks. What about the MCQs, ma'am? Uh, yeah. How the MCQs will be as if you are examiner? Uh, yeah. What you would like to ask in MCQs and uh, how they should prepare for that? Uh, see, MCQs can be anything and uh, in any kind of exam, like uh, let's say you are uh, neat exam. So generally, MCQs are uh, designed in, in a way that. There will be two to three tough questions, and uh, a bulk of them will be easily answerable by everyone. And one or two will be very, very easy. 
Okay. So um, most of you uh, have cracked CET means that you guys are good with MCQ. And okay. these are the field students who are very good with MCQ rather than uh, didactic uh, lecture writing. Like, uh, you know, uh, comprehensively, if you had to write, that is more hard for the present generation rather than uh, thinking everything in the brain and putting one answer. So, yeah, two, three questions will definitely be difficult. And uh, whenever there's an except or those things, uh, think and answer for uh, when, when, when the answer is like, uh, between uh, two things will be very closely related. So you have to apply your mind on those two questions, uh, those two options, and then think and write. Generally, um, by, uh, if you have studied properly, the first answer that comes to your mind is usually the right answer. Okay. So whenever you are in doubt, uh, whatever came to your mind first would, would generally be the best option. Yeah. Um, so I would like to say, ma'am, like add that mm -hmm. just, uh, uh, solving an MCQ is just fun, ma'am. Okay, it's not like a usually theory reading. So mm -hmm. the entire day they'll be studying ophthalmology. Like you said, uh, they can the you uh, like you said there'll be time span will be thirty to forty minutes. That attention span in between during the breaks they can utilize for instead of something else they can utilize for uh, some solving some MCQs of the same topic mm -hmm. whatever they read. So for example today I uh, now reading some on retina. And in the, during the break, I saw some randomly some 10 uh, uh, MCQs related to retina. So it will be a break also, some fun relaxation also. And because the beauty of MCQs is that you need not remember the answers, everything, unlike your uh, fill in the blanks or some theory. The answer is right in front of you. So if you are read somewhere, sometime, it will definitely flash because, because it's uh, right in front of you. So no need to panic about MCQs. Uh, best is that answer is right in front of you. You need to just uh, select the best one. So mm. make yeah, it like uh, uh, solving the MCQ is, is a fun and during yeah. the break time, you can practice. What uh, MCQs require is practice. Solving MCQ is an art. It mm. can't be acquired overnight. Okay, Just mm. by reading, it's mm. not possible. So it's mm. a, just like Madam told, you'll be uh, in a doubt between two options. So how to rule out the options? That's what you need to learn. That will come only by practicing MCQs. So during a break time, when you're traveling or when you have in between the classes, you have some time left. Or in the, uh, so that time, solve some 10, 10 MCQs so that it will be a good practice for you. Yeah. Very rightly said, uh, Kishan. So this uh, solving in a group you now definitely breaks the monotony. We are yeah. all studying 16 hours a day, 18 hours a day. So... Definitely, uh, in between your uh, theory studying alone, uh, four or five, like uh, when you're having a tea break or a coffee break, you can do this and do this uh, discussion. Discuss with a friend also. So that two st his strategy also and your strategy both can be culminated. And, uh, Definitely. Uh, Madam, uh, one more. Some uh, students are asking some questions like, uh, and uh, I know you are the best for that topic only. That is Quint. Okay, some say that, uh, some asking that uh, a squint is a bit difficult topic. Uh, uh, most people find the chapter on squint is a problem. Any okay. tips on simplifying revision of that topic? Okay, so for the exam purpose, if I would say squint is actually like, uh, not for the exam, squint is not very difficult. It's just like your CNS examination. It hmm. appears very daunting, but then uh, if you understand, it's just like mathematics. Because there are only six muscles and only each muscle can perform only that particular action. So it is not, not at all difficult. And I think Kishan, we have also done this class on strabismus. So you can also go back and uh, see this lecture. Yes. It's like really, uh, I mean, a lot of students have liked that lecture. Uh, but then uh, if you take it as an exam point of view, like now having just one month, uh, the marks for that uh, thing is not uh, very great. So usually it is like very expected questions that uh, come from squint. Like uh, it could be uh, differentiating the concomitant or an incomitant squint. And as I told you, differentiating between the two, uh, just put in a tabular column and okay. enumerate all that. The other thing uh, would be uh, action of muscles. Okay, mm -hmm. so extracular muscle action. So that is the. Other question that generally comes uh, and uh, surgeries uh, to weaken a muscle, surgeries to tighten a muscle, so, uh, or uh, what is a phoria. So these are the type of questions that come from squint. 
So right now, uh, you don't have to read the entire chapter, but uh, basically focus on these questions maybe uh, in this chapter. Uh, if, if at all you have to remember, uh, like let's say differentiating paralytic uh, concomitant versus an incompetent sprint, that is the most important uh, question probably in sprint. Uh, it is like uh, you will put concomitant and uh, incompetent. And you just have to uh, remember like uh, symptoms. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and this I'm telling you, uh, you have to break down your answers into smaller sections. Okay. Whatever may be the question. Okay. So in you will have some symptoms and then you will have some signs. Okay. Yes. So in symptoms uh, and uh, demographics. Okay. <laughs> so Incidents. Uh, so it was like concomitant seen in children, incompetent mm. mostly seen in adults. Okay. Mm. Since it was seen in children, now what symptoms uh, generally these people come with uh, the squint itself or mm. decreased vision. So these people will come with diplopia. Okay. Okay. So this is the thing. So now science will be related to these questions only. So whatever is the symptom, the science will be uh, adaptive to these problems. So because this patient has diplopia, we will have an anomalous head posture. Mm. <laughs> so you can write AHP. Here it is absent or present. Here it is definitely present. Okay. okay. Mm. And then uh, if you, uh, because, uh, and because there's a double vision, uh, extra clear movements. <laughs> this is limited. <laughs> so students, uh, what madam is telling to trying to say is, She's giving a template. This holds good for all uh, that uh, different uh, differentiating uh, like uh, uh, based questions. Okay, if any uh, question asked on uh, differentiate between this and that, so this is a bait. You can make a you can have a ready-made template. Okay, ready-made template of what are the side headings to be uh, included. Under that, if you just write just fill in the uh, whatever the gaps are there, so you can beautifully frame an answer and. Uh, uh, write an in, very impressive answer. That's what madam was trying to tell. Now that uh, uh, I am short of questions because uh, uh, and I don't want to end this session so soon. I just want to listen more and more to madam. So uh, Dr. Jesslyn, you are also exam going student uh, in uh, another two, three months. You also have your uh, final uh, exams as a postgraduate. So you also, uh, you may be, uh, you may be having many things in your mind. Okay. Uh, so can you please give some inputs from your experience as well as a student, as well as well as a very uh, guiding senior for your undergraduate uh, juniors? Your inputs, please. Hello, Dr. Jasmine. Uh, yeah, I am please Patrick be seated. Kiji, author Kiji. Uh, please be seated. It's okay. <laughs> Madam is so kind. I know. Yeah. She'll... So like, I would like to show my UG book, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. As you can see, there are so many still uh, post-its are there. So. One thing I would like to suggest is uh, that while you are doing maybe your final revision uh, in the last one week of the exam, then uh, you can put actually mark the pages on the topics uh, which are very volatile for you. For example, Moon and Sun, I could never remember. So I have marked it. So actually this will help you uh, in on the day of exam that at least if you are not able to go through the whole book, you can at least you know go through these uh, topics once on the day of exam. So this is one tip I would like to give. And any any question you have particular as a student uh, before <laughs> the exams, especially uh, for practicals, maybe what all the points to keep in mind before taking a, uh, even how many, like, you know, that uh, case performer for cataract and the coronal ulcer, how many times are you read? Uh, it may be a bit uh, like uh, you may forget. So regarding the case sheet and the findings, what are the things to be keeping? Uh, you should keep in mind. See, one thing is you should be thorough with the performer so that on the day of uh, practical exam, you have no confusion and you don't waste a lot of time in, you know, just thinking about the headings which has to be covered in the examination. So I would uh, advise that at least one day before the practical exam, practice writing the performer. Writing on yeah. yeah. So that, you know, like it should, should come tap, 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 you, all these findings I should write. So that will save a lot of time. And uh, while giving Viva, uh, like well, most important thing is confidence. You should not be scared of answering any question. 
you mm. and if the examiner is asking anything take a moment to think about it mm. and then start answering you should not just you know blabber something there that will give a, a negative Bad impression, impression. Mm. never beat around the bush uh, yes, answer yes. to the point answer to, especially you can ophthalmology and, uh, i still remember my own viva okay you can't the ophthalmology is such a subject you can't uh, like beat around the bush you can either answer directly or you can't answer you know the answer you don't know the answer only two possibilities are there yeah, so if you can take a moment and think about the question and still if nothing is coming in your mind you can tell the examiner uh, I like i'm sorry i don't know this I so don't. that they can you know carry on to the further part of the viva and instead exactly. of you know you beating around the bush and not coming to the right answer so that that is what i used to do as a ug student so how are you feeling now you are also exam going pg uh, yeah. what's there mm-hmm. in your mind what's going on right now yeah, i in- actually got a lot of good tips from ma'am right now as to how to prepare for the exams we still have okay. i think so uh, you got a clear uh, insight now you can follow the same thing uh, for your examination yeah. uh, in a, a more depth maybe and uh, you feel bit relaxed and confident yes now i have can make a proper uh, timetable another 5 6 months i can prepare a timetable of my own and uh, yes i to uh, dear members remember who are uh, willing to take up ophthalmology don't think that purana or parsons is the end of uh, ophthalmology no this is just a, one one maybe one tenth of it uh, you know ophthalmology is the most uh, like what's a very vast subject among all subjects in that small such a small i you have very voluminous books for example in retina for 10 layers you 10 separate books on that okay so ophthalmology is the more i should say it's a extensive and uh, uh, vastest uh, subject uh, on among all the medical uh, uh, subjects i should say so in depth knowledge is required for an ophthalmologist uh, so glad that you have only live one tenth to read in that parsons or in uh, maybe purana maybe uh, madam uh, one last question to you uh, note question uh, actually uh, in most of your libraries would have kanski uh, so pictorial atlas so i mean like those important chapters like uh, let's say uh, clinical features of diabetic retinopathy or those kind of things you can just look into the pictures i'm not asking you to read but just looking into the pictures no can uh, help you better with uh, visual Uh, I mean, like uh, just it, it takes about uh, two hours or so. Once you're done, you done with your first revision, you can just open Kansky pictures, and uh, that will uh, definitely give you better memory. Ma'am, uh, one student uh, asking, yes, uh, Madam, I am finding it so hard to retain the surgical management part of every disease. Are we supposed to mention everything regarding like the length of incision, position? also in medical management is it necessary to mention the dosage route of administration etc see if you uh, mention because what happens madam uh, uh, in many a colleges especially private colleges and all they would not come to ot they would not come to the yes. clinics they would not seen it uh, so say just uh, by mere bookish knowledge it's very yeah. difficult to remember i totally understand their uh, yeah. condition so actually because of uh, uh, even like even uh, uh, dialysis being such a small thing unless there's a visual monitor oh. if the person comes into the ot it's very hard to see what's exactly happening because i am seeing through a microscope you are seeing through a naked eye right so uh, but there, there are a lot of advantages these uh, uh, these just you have a lot of videos uh, very well on youtube so if you uh, watch a video like let's say or finding it difficult to follow cataracts so just watch a video of cataracts okay. That that is better. You can just put it in your own words. It don't. It need not be in the same book language. But at least you can uh, put in short phrases, whatever you saw in the video. And doses, yes, definitely doses are difficult for everyone. Uh, pharmacological uh, exact dosage, exact strength. In general, most of the eye drops uh, are point three percent antibiotics or point five percent. uh natamycin is 5 uh, all the other things are 0.5 natamycin is 5% so see uh, everything uh, you have to make one big table all the drugs you no know, just make one large table in that you put everything in one table and uh, like uh, what are all the drugs that are asked in the antibiotics antifungals just put in a table like how you used to do for pharma 
strength, dosage, indications, contraindications. So for your exam, you will not reach, read the whole chapter of ocular therapy, but just that one uh, chart. I'm sure you must be doing pasting all those things on your walls, no? just uh, yeah. concise. See, now is the time to uh, assimilate whatever you have studied into a very tiny uh, fragment, like a small paper. Uh, because you do not have that much time to go into details. But then you can make small, small sheets uh, and stick it somewhere so that you keep seeing them. Often. That visual memory will be there. Uh, yes. yeah. Mostly the visual memory. Yeah. And uh, one more question, ma'am. Uh, we are sure. glad to have uh, Mr. Bruce Wayne. You know Batman? Uh, pardon, I, I didn't get you. The whole Batman, movie. Batman. Have you seen Batman? Yeah, yeah. Batman movie? Beyond the lead movie. role that Bruce Wayne, he himself is attending our session here in YouTube and uh, he's asking, Madam, uh, <laughs> uh, how to differentiate optic track lesion from optic radiation lesion? Okay. So it is like, uh, you should, again, it all comes down to the anatomy, right? The word itself tells optic radiation, meaning it is like radiative, right? So, uh, most of your questions are related to basic anatomy and physiology. So how is a tract? A tract is a very, very compact uh, area. It's just an extension of your optic no chiasma and then the tract comes. And after the tract is the radiation. radiation. So the fibers are radiating into the entire, not just one lobe. They're going into parietal and your temporal. So they're, they're, whatever was like this is now opening up like this. So let's just think that this is your trap and this is your radiation. radiation. Okay, so any lesion in your optic tract would be a small lesion. Even a small lesion will cause a wider visual field effect. So a tract lesion would always be a hemianopia. Okay, because you know by anatomy, the fibers are compressed into one small uh, area. So if a lesion is compressing, it's compressing the whole uh, tract. But once the radiations are like this, this much tumor will only compress part of the optic radiation. It could be the upper fibers, or it could be the lower fibers. So in your tract, you will generally get the quadrant of the <coughs> So uh, depending on the temporal lobe lesions, you will have an upper in the sky appearance. If it's in the parietal, you are, you are going to get an inferior fine in the sky. So the basic difference is in the basic arrangement of the fibers in the tract and the radiation. And because of this anatomic variation, the visual field defects are definitely larger when the uh, fibers are compressed as in a tract versus radiation. See, if, if you have to get a hemian anopia in a tract lesion, the lesion has to be very big to compress both the uh, fibers in the parietal and the temporal lobe. See, if, if in case of such a large lesion, patient will have additional problems associated with the parietal lobe and the temporal lobe. So that's how you kind of differentiate. Uh, am I clear? Uh, that, that's yes, ma'am. Yes, ma One more question is uh, how, to, uh, how to write, how to attempt uh, this a differential diagnosis, many times in uh, ophthalmology, they ask their favorite question is write the differentials for a red eye or, or, or whatever. So how man, how should we answer differential diagnosis type of questions, both in theory as well as practicals? Yeah, see differential diagnosis, uh, it is not just important for your exams, but uh, it is also you... important as a doctor okay. later on in your life also uh, to formulate a diagnosis. It's not that we will always be right. So we should always have at least two differential diagnoses. And uh, in ophthalmology, there's a very nice uh, book called Hampton and Roy. The whole, the book name itself is differential diagnosis. So uh, nice thing about that, uh, the way that book describes differential diagnosis is that uh, it gives a tabular color. Like in your book also, they have given differential diagnosis of acute red dye, acute congestive glaucoma, acute conjunctivitis and all that. So in that, what you can uh, remember is the symptom most common rarely seen, okay? So CCC, rarely seen in uh, conjunctivitis. So <coughs> when uh, differential diagnosis is there, 
uh, writing it in a tabular way is better. And uh, in your practical and viva exams, uh, it, it would be a crime if you will not give the differential diagnosis. Uh, you have to give the differential diagnosis. Um, definitely, if you are analyzing properly, you will come up with one or two differential diagnoses. I would like to add to that whatever Madam said. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing is that uh, the common one should be told first. Yeah. Yes. Always common. You can't give very rare differentials or uh, then, okay yes. at first. First common things are first. And one more thing, what we should keep in mind while giving differential is all in that particular case, index case, all those features should be correlating. Mm -hmm. Like all mm -hmm. those, like uh, not you can't have uh, for a swelling. Uh, you can't give. My iPad got switched off, so I logged in through. Okay. Yeah. So what I was telling is uh, that what are the differential diagnosis? See, for example, uh, uh, maybe corneal ulcer. Ma'am, madam, uh, correct corneal ulcer. It yes. could be bacterial or fungal or viral. Right. Okay. Right. Yes. Yeah, clinically, you can uh, you can differentiate between clinically that because of the with the hyphae, that the hypopion, all those things. But still, there will be some still uh, most of the even for uh, cornea specialist only it's difficult to identify clinically whether it's fungal or bacterial. So you can give a differential like it's a bacterial corneal ulcer or fungal corneal ulcer. You can't tell uh, like all uh, like it's uh, it may be conjunctivitis, it may be retinitis. You can't tell that such there are differentials. All the whatever the differentials are there, it should be closely associated or closely related <laughs> yes uh, Kishan. so that's what uh, don't uh, go away away it should be uh, very very close to your uh, clinical finding yeah. yeah the next uh, question what we have is uh, uh, madam in the final exam our student expected to write the final diagnosis and uh, difference on the case sheet yes of course you should write of course, of course yes a must. Uh, i would also suggest you write the investigations and management also okay, okay. So a lot of students end it at differential diagnosis but uh, it would be a good idea if you write the investigations you write management brief you don't have to be elaborate you don't have to elaborately write the management but then you definitely have to write uh, what are the investigations you just put local investigations systemic investigations management uh, preferred surgery, other options. Okay, so by writing, uh, one advantage is that uh, since you put it on paper, your mind registered it very well. So when you are presenting the case, you are not in. Uh, since you have just written it about ten minutes or uh, maximum time is two hours earlier, you will be in a better position to answer. You will, your mind will be a lot more clear to tell what you have already written. So. That is another uh, important thing to put your differential diagnosis. See, uh, that makes you think. That's what I was telling. Later years also make it a habit to put your differential diagnosis on paper rather than writing just one diagnosis. So writing at one and finishing it off ends your thought process later to think what else it could be. So by putting it on paper, you simply cannot put a bacterial corneal ulcer without thinking, right? So it's a very, very, uh, see why the whole exams are being done is to prepare you to become good uh, clinicians. Okay. So the differential diagnosis is very, very important. And putting it on paper uh, makes you commit to that particular diagnosis. Madam, uh, many more questions. Uh, they'll type it in the YouTube if, after watching the video. If you have any more doubts, uh, I know immediately you may not get a question or doubt. As yes. in when you watch the video, as in when you study yeah, ophthalmology, yeah. if you get any more doubts, you please type it on uh, uh, the comment section. I will forward it to madam and get a good answer from her uh, at her convenient time. And I'll uh, post it in the chat section as well. Okay. Yeah. So many active participants, Aditya, Sandra, everyone. Thank you so much. Madam, at the end, uh, what's your concluding remarks? Like uh, as a very passionate teacher and uh, you are known for very student-friendly teacher. You looked mm -hmm. after us so well, like your own children, more than students. So caring, so concerned. Always uh, in the evenings, whenever possible, you try to take classes for us. And uh, you made ophthalmology very interesting and uh, as well as engage, uh, engaging uh, subject uh, during third year itself. Okay. So, mm -hmm. madam, your concluding remarks, please. Uh, how can I excel in ophthalmology? I want to be top of. Uh, 
university topper madam nothing less than that <laughs> okay. so it is just that uh, revision revision and revision at this stage uh, because it's one month uh, try and do maximum revisions and uh, 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 read uh, like at least flip all the pages just before your exams and uh, keep the drawings uh, represent very nicely on your paper and definitely in your practical exam don't be afraid you may be telling a right answer in a wrong body language so that will not get conveyed to the exam uh-huh. so have a very top class attitude be relaxed and uh, even if your answer is not proper like completely but if you are talking confidently with a very good body see that is something which is lacking in medical students like the way you talk so uh, definitely keep a um, uh, thing about uh, being confident you are nobody is going to fail you or something right uh, it's like uh, you cannot do anything also even if you're going to fail so be confident by being confident you have better chances of passing for i'm telling this for people who are thinking they might fail so if you are very afraid that your examiner may think or oh, this person is afraid doesn't know anything at least by your confidence uh, no. like confidence <laughs> exam will all get confused madam oh if he's telling so confidently means that should be right only i think i should revise again they may he may feel yes madam now everyone got my secret okay now everyone got my secret now uh, they also understood that uh, what is the source behind uh, me every time telling uh, the secret for success i keep on telling where uh, it is hard work plus self confidence equal to sure success madam can you please reiterate by writing it down once on the board and please uh, the formula for success please uh, dear friends please note it down for your uh, again to enhancing your uh, confidence levels madam is the uh, success formula is of course uh, you should do repeated revisions regular reading and there is no madam told it in the beginning itself there is no alternative but for hard work okay yeah, even that maybe one month or just uh, two weeks you should put uh, do your hard work i put in two things uh, one this is what professor uh, ramesh pratikar sir told me smile right and whatever i am today reputation is the mother okay is the mother of success is one and the second thing i am going to put what we should learn at tell is this word So, madam self confidence ma'am as uh, yeah. hard work plus self confidence hard work along with that like you said see even just if you read or if you uh, have a lot of knowledge it's not uh, enough you should have uh, self belief that i can perform well i can do well that self confidence this will bring you sure success so yes. this will be more success not just success but sure success madam <laughs> thank you so yeah, much for a lovely what do you want to highlight we are going to yeah yeah see madam also showed how to write it in exam like flow chart is there highlighting is there <laughs> demonstrate <laughs> demonstration how to write an exam also uh, thank you so much madam lovely uh, lovely yeah. learning i don't feel like stopping this session actually but uh, i understand uh, how you are feeling inside your throat it's no, not no, allowing no. you to talk so freely but uh, no. the uh, the reassurance to all the viewers and the members is that madams almost all the videos are already available especially the viva voice uh, video excellent excellent video madam has prepared on uh, uh, ophthalmology all the case presentations uh, mentored by madam are available Uh, whatever important required for examination already available you need to just uh, revise them and uh, refer them at your convenience when are required okay so this is just a, a session of uh, re- reassurance for you all by mentor herself okay who has taught you all these throughout the year so just uh, go through those videos uh, get benefited and if you have any doubt any time please feel free okay uh, don't hesitate ask any doubts you can message me personally i'll uh, forward it to madam and get it answered or you can uh, put it in any comment section of any of our videos i'll i'll keep uh, seeing through all the comments and uh, i'll get it answered by madam okay uh, we wish yeah. you all the very best for your exams yeah thank for you for your so preparation much. and for your the actual exams as well yeah there is a youtube playlist on uh, vitamin 
page on uh, ophthalmology i'll be again sharing that uh, uh, playlist on uh, all my um, platforms today evening after the session along with this youtube link so please go through that and uh, make the best use of all these resources available okay uh, uh, when see that's what madam was telling the social media or the phone becomes a distraction when you don't use it appropriately or correctly for your benefit okay so instead during the breaks if you use the same social media for a study purpose then you can uh, get double benefit from the book as well as the uh, this phone okay so use it judiciously use it wisely that's what uh, as a uh, elder brother my my uh, suggestion to you all uh, thank you once again uh, ever young chinmay madam like thank 10 you. years <laughs> down the line when i was a student exactly 2012 she was the same and now also she is the same <laughs> in my madam yeah, by all means uh, thank you once again keep uh, guiding us ma'am need all your guide uh, blessings guidance uh, through